chest pain in children. In this section on approach to chest pain in children, we will be discussing the list of differential diagnoses and then we will be progressing on to learn the approach based on the history, physical examination and investigations. Chest pain is a common complaint in the emergency department. In pediatrics, unlike the adult population, chest pain is rarely due to a cardiac etiology. By knowing what red flags to look for, the history and physical examination help to differentiate dangerous causes from benign causes. Cardiac causes include structural cardiac defects, especially those that obstruct the left ventricular outflow tract, including hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy and aortic stenosis. Acute inflammation of the cardiac muscle as in myocarditis or inflammation of the pericardium as in pericarditis can cause chest pain. More rarely, abnormal coronary arteries like anomalous left coronary artery from the pulmonary artery, or l kappa is also a cause. Respiratory causes include pneumothorax, which can be either spontaneous or trauma-induced, pneumonia, asthma exacerbation, and more rarely, pulmonary embolism. Gastrointestinal causes include gastroesophageal reflux disease and esophagitis. Muscular skeletal chest pain is common in children. These include costochondritis and slipping rib syndrome. Psychogenic causes include hyperventilation and anxiety. Foreign body ingestion may present with chest pain or more commonly may be asymptomatic. Do not forget to look at the chest wall for local infections to the skin and underlying tissues. Presenting complaint. Ask about the nature of the chest pain. Is it a sharp poking pain, a throbbing pain, or a feeling of tightness within the chest? Importantly, was it triggered by exertion? This is a red flag. Conversely, chest pain that occurs while the child is at rest is very unlikely to be cardiac in origin. Ask about the site of the pain, any radiation, what is the frequency and duration of the pain, and its severity. Does the pain worsen on exertion or is it related to meals? Is it pleuritic in nature? That is, does it worsen with deep breathing or coughing? Associated syncope is a red flag as well. Check if the child had associated palpitations, diaphoresis or shortness of breath during this episode. Do not forget to ask about a history of recent trauma to the chest wall. In the past medical history, Ask if there is a history of asthma or Marfan syndrome. These predispose the child to pneumothorax. Has there been any previous cardiac history or surgery performed? If there has been a previous history of Kawasaki disease, this child may have developed coronary aneurysms, especially if it was not treated promptly. When asking about family history, inquire specifically about any known abnormal cardiac structures known history of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, arrhythmias, early death, or even recurrent miscarriages. Rarely, drugs like cocaine, if used, may cause chest pain. When suspecting psychogenic causes, the social history is especially important to elicit any recent stresses that could account for the child's symptoms. Vital Signs Check the heart rate and blood pressure against age-related norms. Look for signs of respiratory distress. When examining the chest, inspect for signs of trauma. Palpate for trachea deviation and localize any chest wall tenderness. This is especially important because if there is chest pain reproducible on palpation, it is very likely to be musculoskeletal in nature. On percussion, look out for an asymmetrical percussion note. A dull percussion note in the presence of other signs of infection like fever and cough could mean a consolidation pointing towards a pneumonia, while a hyperresonant percussion note would point to a pneumothorax. Listen for heart sounds. Check if the heart sounds are soft or if there's a gallop rhythm present. These are red flags for cardiac causes. Do a detailed auscultation both anteriorly and posteriorly, listening for air entry. 
and the presence of any adventitious sounds like bronchi or crepitations. Always remember to palpate the abdomen for hepatomegaly and do check the femoral pulses for any radio femoral delay. On the ECG, we look specifically for rate, rhythm and axis. If the PR interval is too short, it suggests an accessory pathway. If the PR interval is too long, it suggests the presence of an AV block. Look for STT changes that may suggest the presence of myocardial ischemia. Review the height of the R waves in the lateral chest leads. These may be abnormally tall in left ventricular hypertrophy. Calculate the corrected QT interval, which I will show you in a while. On the chest X-ray, look for the cardiothoracic ratio and follow through the lung interstitial markings to make sure there is no pneumothorax. Cardiac enzymes should be done whenever you suspect acute myocarditis. Cardiology referral for 2D echo should be done if there are red flags on history and physical examination. 2D echo is useful to rule out structural abnormalities, motion wall abnormalities, to assess for cardiac function, as well as to look for the presence of any pericardial effusion. Look at this 12 lead ECG. We start by determining the rate, rhythm, and axis. The rate is determined by 300 divided by the number of big squares between R to R. Look, is every QRS preceded by a normal looking P wave? If so, this is normal sinus rhythm. Also, look at leads 1 and AVF. If the complexes are both positive, this is normal axis. The PR interval physiologically occurs because of the electrical impulse travelling through the AV node. If it is too short or absent, an accessory pathway is present. This would result in premature depolarization of the ventricle. Look at this 12 lead ECG. The PR interval is very short and a delta wave is present. Therefore, this is Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. Conversely, if the PR interval is too long, that would suggest an AV block. Don't forget to look at the size of the R waves in the lateral chest leads as well to assess for the presence of left ventricular hypertrophy. There would usually be accompanying deep S waves in the anterior chest leads that would suggest LVH. It is important not to miss long QT syndrome. These patients are predisposed to ventricular tachycardia, specifically torsades. The correct QT is calculated by taking the distance of one QT and dividing that by the square root of the preceding RR interval. If the correct QT is longer than 0.45 seconds, then that meets the criteria for long QT syndrome. On the chest radiograph, look at the mediastinal outline. Check the cardiac size. If the cardiothoracic ratio exceeds 0.5 or in neonates 0.6, there is cardiomegaly. Note, however, that if the film was a supine film or poorly inspired, it would not be easy to assess the cardiac size. Also, follow through the mediastinal outline, looking for the presence of any air that would suggest pneumomediastinum. Remember to follow through the lung interstitial markings all the way to the peripheries. In this case, there is a pneumothorax in the left hemithorax as shown by the hyperlucency in the peripheral lung fields with the absence of lung markings. In conclusion, the management of chest pain depends on the etiology of the chest pain. Look out for red flags when approaching a child with chest pain. Do not belittle the yields of a thorough history and physical examination. They can help you derive your diagnosis. ECG and chest x-ray are important to identify specific cardiac and respiratory abnormalities, but you must know what to look out for, and you should correlate these with your history and physical examination findings.